driving through the roads of Allegheny County and many bridges you are going to encounter about 20 to 40 feet long and just like that you're right across the but bridges like this one here in Plum Borough are part of the new Pennsylvania bridge overhaul plan. Dog food is something you just go to the store and buy but one local resident feeds Avon here the same types of food you and I would eat for dinner. In his last year Ed Rendell had set aside $5.77 billion in basic education. Now only $4.73 billion of it was from the state budget, the rest was federal stimulus money. Governor Tom Corbett in his first year had $5.35 billion set aside for basic education, all of which was state money. Once again, the Steel City and the bright lights of Hollywood are crossing paths. With the new movie The Last Witch Hunter being filmed out of the Carlisle building, many people all around the city of Pittsburgh have been trying to see the big man himself, Vin Diesel. President Barack Obama, as well as former President Bill Clinton, celebrated the 20th anniversary of AmeriCorps by swearing in the class of 2014. PNC is usually associated with this kind of green, but currently they are constructing one of the greenest buildings in the country. The sounds of construction have been ringing in the ears of everyone in downtown for months now. While the city is proud of the progress this is bringing to the area, employees and students just want this parking nightmare to end. The Civic Arena saw plenty of hard-fought battles with the Pittsburgh Penguins. It may no longer be here, but once again is at the center of another heated battle. At a public meeting about the redevelopment, Hill District residents told the Pittsburgh Penguins organization their biggest concern with the plan, and that is not enough affordable housing. Carl Redwood is the director of the Hill District Consensus Group. You're talking about 20% affordable, where the community plan calls for 30% affordable. Citizens also wanted to know if the affordable housing would truly stay affordable to them or if the rates would go up. That $600 in the future two years from now to rise to $800 just for inflation. Redwood also expressed his concern about the affordability. At the rates they want to set for rental housing, most of the people in the Hill District will not be able to live in the new housing that's built in the Lower Hill District. This is all part of the Penguins' plan to redevelop the site of the former Civic Arena, which calls for commercial, hotel, and residential spacing. Penguins COO Travis Williams feels this redevelopment is a monumental agreement. I would actually guess that it's actually one of the top uh, community benefits arrangements or agreements throughout the entire country. The public forums will continue for another few weeks as both sides continue to negotiate. Reporting from the Hill District, for Point News, I'm Chris Hoffman. Dog food is something you just go to the store and buy, but one local resident feeds Avon here the same types of food you and I would eat for dinner. Heidelberg resident Bernadette Kazar was introduced to the new way of feeding her dogs after Ruby, her late Cocker Spaniel, became ill. Ruby had to be put on a liver diet, which was white fish, potatoes, and, that, and she was on that for six weeks. And the reason for that is we had to detox the liver. This special diet was suggested by veterinarian and author of Dinner Possible, Dr. Kathy Alanovi, who's based in the state of Indiana. She explains why people food is just as good for dogs. So anybody who's under 50 years old thinks, ooh, it's not safe. They never stop and think, why is chicken and green beans not healthy for our dogs? Why is the chicken not healthy for our cats? Our cats are pure carnivores. Chicken should be healthy. Kazar is currently making the dog food right out of her own home. Basic good stuff, things that we should be eating. Basic it is, with dishes like beef and veggies, meatloaf, chicken, shrimp and veggies, and turkey and salmon hash. Kazar uses vegetables right out of her own garden as ingredients too. How is it, Chris? Mmm, yum yum. It's amazing what this, you know, homemade okay. food is doing for them. It's, it's all natural, it's, it's just wonderful. Not only is Kazar making the dog food for her own dogs, she is working on creating a small business. So far, Kazar named her business Paulicious. She obtained an LLC license, tax number, and then she had all of her food tested by an independent study lab. I had to get all the food, which there was about eight to 10 of them, and have them um, tested by the independent lab. So that was making them frozen and shipping them to New Jersey. And they tested for protein, carb, and moisture. Kayser was then able to create a nutritional fax label to send to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, which has been approved. When you do this to the dogs and you see how they're eating it and you know you're giving it the best they are getting, 
it's, it's, it's really rewarding. It's very, very fulfilling. Kazar hopes to see other dogs enjoy the same health benefits she's seen in her own. Reporting from Heidelberg, for Point News, I'm Chris Hoffman. The White House released a study with some eye-opening statistics saying one in five college girls will be the victim of a sexual assault. Students and groups are finding ways to bow this issue at colleges across the country. Point Park student Jillian Trainer takes a proactive approach to situations to make sure she does not become the victim of a sexual assault. I do my best not to travel alone at night when if I feel uncomfortable I usually listen to my gut and go to the other side of the road or do stuff like that. Um, I've taken some self-defense classes just to be on the safe side. Just as Trainer is taking steps to protect herself, Dr. Caroline Heldman and the organization of End Rape on Campus is trying to protect students at every college. They have seen progress in the handling of sexual assaults at colleges in the past few years. Two years ago, administrators were openly dismissive, so I think it's, it's progress that nowadays, if, if you bring up the issue on campus, not only has it already been you know, discussed, but campuses are, all, are taking proactive measures. Point Park has also taken measures against sexual assault, as they have stated no sexual crime will be tolerated at the university. The university has taken a policy of increasing awareness, prevention, and services in the event of a sexual assault. With this in place, Trainer feels Point Park has taken the measures to have students protected. I feel safe here because there's an, enough security guards and there's enough precautions taken with all the door locks and everything. President Barack Obama signed into action a presidential memorandum to create a task force to help protect students from sexual assaults. Reporting for Point News, I'm Chris Hoffman. In the last few months, Pennsylvania voters have heard a lot about basic education. Governor Tom Corbett has said he's put money into the budget. We have now grown the budget back to uh, over uh, $10 billion, and we have put more money into education at any time in the history of education here in Pennsylvania. While his challenger, Democrat Tom Wolf, has said Governor Corbett has actually taken money away from basic education. A billion dollars was cut from education in Governor Corbett's first term, and, and that's, that's the truth. Each candidate says he is speaking the truth. So, Point News decided to look into the matter, and here's what we found. Now, here's the state budget in the last year of Governor Ed Rendell, 2010-2011, and the first year of Governor Tom Corbett. In his last year, Ed Rendell had set aside $5.77 billion in basic education. Now, only $4.73 billion of it was from the state budget. The rest was federal stimulus money. Governor Tom Corbett, in his first year, had $5.35 billion set aside for basic education, all of which was state money. So Governor Tom Corbett is actually accurate in saying his administration put forth more state money toward education. Now, we've replaced it. We're above where, uh, to the highest level ever if we're talking state dollars. But if you add the total money, state and federal, that goes into education now compared to four years ago, Corbett has actually spent less on education than his Democratic predecessor. Tom Wolf also argues that money now isn't going into the classroom, but instead into teacher pension funds. We still, in terms of what's going into the classroom, we're still down by $580 million. In Reporting for Point News, I'm Chris Hoffman.